let's talk audiobooks. Uh, apparently, there's an argument over is an audiobook like reading a book? Yes, if it's unabridged and it's exactly the book word for word, yes, it is reading the book. If you are a beginner and you come across a novel that looks very intimidating, meaning, you know, rather large, or maybe there's a series like, let's say, Twilight, for instance. Okay, I want to read them, but I'm like, yo, that's a lot of reading. I do recommend getting the audiobook that's unabridged, so it will have several discs, several cassettes, or maybe you, you know, like to subscribe and download the audio. You can do it that way too. Me, just for nostalgic reasons i do have a cassette tape player and i do have a cd player let me show you for instance some of the things that i have in audiobooks and the different types of audiobooks that i have so it's all depends on what you want what you're comfortable with and what's easy for you to use i have a lot of stephen king audiobooks this one here happens to be in a cassette tape so you pull one out like this and it looks like this and the cassette tapes are in there and it has a picture of Stephen King on it and then it has a picture of who's reading it. If you can find one where Stephen King is actually reading it himself, that is seriously cool. Well, this one I got there, it was $3 when I got it. This is an absolute collectible in pristine condition. So this one is like a decent sized book, you know, but if you're a beginner, you might be like, mm, you know, it's all in preference quick you know there's a thing where we call quick reads so some books are quick reads where they're not that many pages this is 408 pages this to me would be a quick read so somebody else it might be like oh my gosh so here is the audiobook and it's read by uh julia whalen and kirby hayborn and it's the unabridged production this is going to tell the whole entire story word for word as the book dictates so this would be good to read along and it is really fun and it does get your imagination going and it does get you into the book and it helps it helps you to read along especially you know if you're not like a speed reader sometimes i can read really fast timed myself and did this test online and apparently i am because i can read so many pages in a minute and a half um when you read along to an audiobook, you're going at their pace, but it's more fun because, you know, you're reading it, but you're hearing these voices narrating it. It's super cool. Great thing to do. So this is discs and it comes like this. So this is disc one, two, three, and then four, and then five. So this is only five of the disc that this one is. How many are in here? There's 15 compact discs. I know it looks like a little thrash, but I got it at the swap meet. And when I bought it, believe it or not, I only paid a dollar for this. Days when like, you know, like you're sick and you can't hold up your book or maybe you want to plug in headphones and your significant other is in the bed with you and you don't want to have lights on and stuff like that. That's another good reason to dive into an audiobook. All my audiobooks that I have, I like to have them unabridged unless they're like this one here where it's like, a, you know, a biographical memoir type deal. But I like them to be word for word. So Lovely Bones is going to cover that too. This one's going to be great. It's read by, let me see, narrated by um, Alyssa Brenahan. And the more you get to know audiobooks or you know, however you get them, download them, buy them like I do, whatever the deal may be. And there are some that are up on YouTube too. So I do have channels that are saved with those as well to read along with the book. You start to get to be familiar with the stars who do the narrating. And um, sometimes you come across something that is super hard to find. And once again, we're talking about my Stephen King. Here is Carrie. And Carrie is narrated by the one and the only who played her in the original movie, Sissy Spacek. Sissy Spacek is reading the unabridged Carrie. This is gonna be so good. This was like a moment for me. 
Um, I probably will not be listening to this in the dark. I will listen to this during the day. But I mean, come on. This is this is like great stuff here. So imagine reading along. I'm going to pull Carrie and I'm going to read along to Sissy Spacek narrating it. That's that's amazing. Another one that I got is Michael Crichton. He's the one that wrote Jurassic Park. So he has this other one called Pirate Latitudes. And I actually came across this book in a thrift store and I bought it for a dollar. So when I saw this, I was like, I got to have this to go along with it unabridged um, as well. And I paid a dollar for it at the swap meet. This is totally worth it. And yeah, I always do check to make sure that they're all in there. Otherwise, I won't buy it. My son got all into Harry Potter. I'm still looking for the books. This is The Prisoner of es Azkaban, however you pronounce that. The Chamber of Secrets here. And The Sorcerer's Stone. And these are all on cassette. Which is super cute because I do have my cassette player. And I do play it during the day. I have a lot of Stephen King on cassette too, which is really cool and very nostalgic because I have the long, you know, black one with the handle on the end where you press record and everything like in the creepy, scary movies. So it's really cool to hear the sound of the cassette player. The cassettes are like this. They're still in very good shape. You always want to check this out. If you're buying cassettes, you always want to make sure that the little uh, felt the little felt thing I don't know what you call this thing but it's like when you push play it puts pressure and it's the thing that puts pressure on the tape that makes sure that it plays smoothly so you always want to make sure that's great and then you always want to look at the actual tape itself and make sure that it's not doing like this contouring like a cupping where it looks like it's bowing that's what you call it bowing because that's a sign of it being warped so you want to be careful and then you always want to look on the inside too because if these things are spinning freely then there's something broken on the inside and then you always want to check in here and make sure that there's not like any kind of crud or anything in there that means that it's been warped you know like with water or heat and I always check to make sure that they're all in here so I always read the box and if it says okay it has six cassettes or five cassettes then I count I make sure that they're all in there that means I have to find the other ones I don't care if they're on disc or cassette tape doesn't matter to me when COVID first started and we were all shut down and I know we don't want to mention that stuff but I just thought I would let you know and that's when things were so closed down and so hard to find and I actually made the decision to rebuild my library. My husband like I said had convinced me before to get rid of all my books and I kept like 12 or 15 of them and then moved to San Diego and then here I am three years later we're on shutdown and I have books that I have already read two or three times and I actually started ordering them online because I was dying and I'm not a tv person and I can't sit there and watch tv for hours and hours like that it drives me insane thus rebuilding the library to keep me sane there's nothing wrong with audiobooks. I have a lot of them. Like I said, I have a lot of Dean Koontz, a couple of Anne Rice, and most of them are Stephen King because I love to hear the narration reading along with all these long books like that. Short stories I can do, but like Insomnia. This one has The Shining, Salem's Lot, The Night Shift, and Carrie. So I mean, can you imagine Dreamcatcher, Desperation? Those are like thick books. And then of course, all of the Dark Tower series is like, audiobooks are great. They're great. You can, whatever your reason is, it's your eyes, your ears, your kids, your commute, whatever it is, audiobooks always help. Because my husband likes to come in and interrupt me a lot, which is why they bought me this sign. And I hope you like this video on audiobooks and follow me and I will help you build your library. Any recommendations that you can think of, places that I would like to go, or maybe even a book, that's just so bizarre and out there that you're like, hey, Austin, this might be right up your alley. Go ahead and put that down in the comments and like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Follow me. Let's build that library.